All right, guys, so for today's video, we're going to be talking about AOC and her claim that if we don't allow trans women or girls to participate in female sports, then biological women are going to have to undergo genital examinations. And she said this during a Tuesday House Oversight Subcommittee on a health hearing, which centered on Biden's regime proposed revision to Title IX. AOC addressed some concerns. Now, we're going to go through the rest of this, a little bit more of this article, but I wanted to go through the video of this just so you can all hear how absolutely delusional this woman is, all right? The amount of my time here in Congress sitting through panels and hearings of men attempting to restrict the rights of women and telling us that it's for our own good. Um, so right off the bat, men saying that men shouldn't be participating in women's sports is telling women what they should do with their own bodies because she believes trans women or girls are women. Yet it's women like her who are actually harming women and not allowing them to have their own space or sports. But apparently the patriarchy, as always, is the one that's keeping them down when they're actually trying to protect the women and the girls who are in those sports and spaces. Like, this is the mental brain rot that this woman has. But I want to dive a little bit more deeply into why this issue with targeting trans women in sports is particularly problematic, not just for trans girls, but for all of us. It's problematic because men or boys shouldn't be in women or girls sports. They have their own sports category. That's where the problem lies. No other problem. <laughs> That's the only problem. Ugh. We're here today because there's a proposal here and there are several proposals here uh, to further marginalize trans women in sports and i think about this all the time because trans people i mean we're not marginalizing trans women in sports we're simply saying men should not be allowed to play with women like she uses the wording in a way that it sounds nice to the ears but really if you break it down she's talking absolute nonsense there's no marginalized trans women in sports. They have their own category again already. They're men. In sports. And I think about this all the time because trans people in the United States doesn't even exceed 1% of our population. And yet there's so many resources and energy and time dedicated to figuring out how we can more finely exclude them um, from our sports. And isn't that interesting that she claims that only 1% of the population are trans people, yet this is the 1% we want to cater to when the rest of the team, say 99% or even 90% of a team or an organization don't want a man in their facility, in their sport, on their team, anything like that. You're going to cater to that 1%, but complain here that they only make up 1%. Like, the hypocrisy is crazy. And I thought, why? Why? Why so much effort and dedication on such a tiny portion because of the U.S. population when be, there virtually is no women. major issue that is, um, that is precipitating? And... And again, no major issue. This is just like when Jonathan Van Ness was on that podcast and he claimed that there's a fictitious female uh, uh, inequities or sports, whatever it is. I'll, I'll play that clip right here. I wish that people were as passionate about little kids being able to like be included or grow up as they were about fictitious women's fairness in sports. Like... I don't understand how she can say that, how he can say that. We have multiple cases now where trans women, trans girls are winning competitions, running, cycling, swimming, whatever the case may be. We have women who are fed up where they're just flat out quitting or, or giving up 
so that they don't even have to cater to this craziness like recently in the uh jujitsu tournaments or even in the realm of professional pool where it was the finals and the women just forfeit because she didn't even want to do it here's that clip You can win the lag. Yes, man. Yes, man. So it just seems very strange that she and he and anybody else can go on and say about how oh, there is no problem. I don't know why trans people are being targeted, why we're making all these rules and regulations against them. It's not against them. We've always had them. Boys and girls, men and women's sports are separate unless there's some sort of co-ed league or co-ed you know, uh, competition, like sometimes in tennis, they'll have, you know, a man and a woman versus a man and a woman. And all you're really seeing is the men surfing and serving and serving over and over and over again, and just acing the women who are supposed to be receiving it because they can't. Really sorry about that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Well, this we know for sure. Yeah, that's the one I'm waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this is kind of six foot ten. Oh. You know, uh, take no prisoners out here. Um. But again, there doesn't seem to be any problem here. I started to realize that a lot of these proposals here um, involve invasion of privacy of all oh. women. Right. Ms. Goss Graves, can you tell us a little bit about what sex testing looks like for youth in states with trans athletic bans? It, it's terrible. Uh, in some states, any individual could challenge whether someone is a girl enough to play. In some states, it requires actual a genital verification, which is shocking. Mm -hmm. um, and now, what's interesting to me is no girl would probably challenge another girl because, hey, they know that they're a girl. The only person that would probably ever get challenged would be a trans girl or a trans woman. Women would challenge that. If a trans woman who knows that they're biologically a male decided to challenge a biological woman in regards to whether she's a woman or not, that would just be very stupid but also this is not some crazy thing genital examinations physicals especially in sports has always been a thing maybe times have changed since i was in sports but you would get into a program like basketball football whatever and you would do a physical you would get examined and sometimes depending on how many other sports you were in you'd get a physical multiple times of the year you could have one in September for basketball. You could have one in December for football or swimming. You could have another one, uh, you know, a few months later for another sport you're doing. Physicals aren't just a new thing that has, has, has propped up and sprung up out of nowhere. Like, the fact that she has this woman here is kind of ridiculous. There aren't, it's not as if there... Okay. And let me just stop you right there. You said there are some proposals. I mean, we've seen this in Ohio. There was a proposed ban on trans athletes that originally allowed for genital examinations on minors in order to, quote, unquote, protect women. Is that correct? Unfortunately, yes. And so we're seeing here in this guise, under the guise of not only trying to further marginalize trans women and girls, we are talking about opening up all women and girls to genital examination. Physicals are a thing, especially in sports. Even when you're in elementary and high school, physicals are a thing. 
This is not some, again, new thing that people are just doing for the sake of doing. But again, you won't even need to potentially get into this if that's all you're trying to do. You can do mouth swabs. Heck, you could even maybe, you know, have a birth certificate that would say what you are. I don't know. There's other ways to go about it if you're so concerned with genital examinations. But again, physicals are a thing. So I don't know. Like It, it saddens me that her and I are the same age. And this is how she thinks. Like, did she never... I bet she never really was in sports, but regardless. Nations, when they are underage. That's right. Potentially just because someone can point to someone and say, I don't think you're a girl. That's correct. And we're saying this in an environment of a post-Dobbs America where states are criminalizing access to abortion and want nothing more than data on women to figure out when, who's getting a menstrual cycle, who doesn't have one. And we're supposed to believe that this is going to make us better? Again, that's what physicals do as well. You already have this sort of thing. Physicals give you all that data points already. It's crazy that she's thinking this way. And safer? I think not. And per usual, I don't believe we're sitting here in a panel of men that has actually thought of about the biology and privacy consequences of all women, trans or cisgender. Oh my god, I can't listen to the rest of this. Again, the fact that she's balling up trans women and trans girls with this is crazy. And, uh, and again, men are the ones that are protecting these girls. From this craziness, you are the one who is perpetuating this. So to be here is trying to tout that it's the patriarchy or it's misogyny that's the fact that's keeping these women down or suppressing them. It's the men, who you're saying are here, that are trying to push forward something to continue protecting women and girls in spaces and sports and all other aspects of life. Yet she wants to push against that narrative. But, but you know what? All right, all right, we're almost done. Let's just finish the rest of this. Here. Ms. Gossgraves, in addition to that, are there certain groups more likely to face discrimination under these bans? Oh, here we go. When well, it comes to, and, and what you were speaking to, particularly here, when it comes to black women and go. girls? <laughs> she had to throw in black women and girls there which is crazy that you want to throw now the race card into this whole trans debate and everything but as always this is just my opinion i'd love to hear from you guys please let me know in the comment section below how you guys feel about this and as always i will catch you guys on the next one thanks so much